Saddlebags part two. Continuing on with our discussion and research of Federal Cavalry saddlebags, one thing we didn't really go over was the actual dimensions and the design of the Federal issue saddlebags. If you haven't seen our last video of what the Army initially designed to go inside the saddlebags, please click on the card that shows up right now. Uh, otherwise, what we're going to do is dive into and actually show some pictures of original and quality reproduction saddlebags and figure out exactly what the dimensions and the capability and capacity was. So the point that we made in the previous saddlebag video is that the standard issue 59 saddlebags that you can see in photos or even examine in person are actually quite small. How small? Well, first, those of you who know us, we go straight to the manual. Let's go to the Army's Ordinance, 18, the 1862 Army Ordinance Manual that specifies their design before we actually look at the saddlebags that were issued to the troops in the field. So in the cavalry section on page 158 of the 1862 Ordnance Manual, it states the following. The saddlebags are composed of two pouches and one seat. The ends of the seat are sewed to the pouches, and each pouch has one back, sewed to the gusset in the upper part of the inner front with a welt, one gusset sewed to the back, and to one outer and one inner front with a welt, one flap sewed to the front of the back and to the seat by two seams, one flap billet sewed to the point of the flap, one shape and one buckle, number 11A, sewn to the outer front, one billet and one buckle again, number 11A, sewed to the shape. The seat is sewed to the pouch by the same seams which join the flap to the back of the pouch. It has two holes for the foot staples and one hole for the saddlebag stud. Two key straps sewed to the seat near its ends and four lacing thongs for the pouches. So as you can see from the specifications in the 1862 Ordnance Manual, not much detail is made clear regarding the actual dimensions. A lot of detail is, uh, is given on the design and exactly how many buckles and what type of buckles and where the seams are supposed to be, but not much is given on the actual dimensions, the depth, the width uh, of the saddlebags you know, that were kind of part of the 59 set that was issued to the troopers during the Civil War. Now, I also looked at the 1865 Quartermaster's Manual and and it doesn't have the specs uh, that we're looking for. And I even looked in the, 18, the earlier 1841 ordinance manual, which obviously still, even though actually there wasn't a whole lot in there either, but it, that wouldn't be appropriate because it wasn't part of the 59 standard issue tax set that was issued to the troops during the Civil War. So in looking over a couple originals that I had access to and talking with those who have access to a few more samples, it appears that there were actually some pretty decent variations to the different contractors who supplied saddlebags to the army. However, the average dimensions of all those originals that we were able to look at and measure and get information from were actually pretty similar to this quality uh, reproduction set of saddlebags. And to get, get an idea of the dimensions, they were as follows. Seven inches at the top of the open bags, about eight and a half inches in length, about eight inches at its widest part, including the expandable sides, and about two and a half inches in depth. Now, however, the depth is very dependent on the pliability and the flexibility of the leather sections that allow it to expand to its fullest potential, but those were the average dimensions that I received from originals and the quality reproductions that some of the uh, leather makers and saddle makers around the country do. Uh, they do a pretty good job of you know, reproducing quality saddlebags that are about the same dimensions as the originals. Additionally, like the ordinance manual specifies, there's actually a front pocket or flap that actually acts more as a sleeve to place small objects such as a hoof pick, maybe some nails, or even some, uh, some paper documents or anything like that. Uh, the nice little sleeve here that you could put those smaller items. This front flap, however, does not have much ability to keep objects with much mass or much depth. But again, like I said, it is good uh, for, for small thin items. Also, one thing that's interesting to note is that you can see here the ends or the bottom of each side is stitched with a strap and a buckle to secure it to the skirt of the McClellan saddle. Additionally, one thing that can be annoying about these 59 st uh, style saddlebags is the method in which they were designed to secure to the actual staples, if you will, uh, to the saddle itself. As you can see from this picture, and as the design specifications discussed in the ordnance manual, there is a strap that is stitched to the yoke of the bags that is designed to go through the staple of the saddle, which in turn, it itself has gone through a small slit in the saddle bags. 
To keep the slit from stretching out and becoming loose, you have to cut the slit just large enough for the staple uh, on the saddle to poke through the leather. Uh, however, with new leather, this is pretty difficult and really stiff to do so, and you need some pretty good, uh, nice, fine tools to get that uh, strap through the hole and the staple up through the slit. Uh, but if you make the slit even a fraction larger than needed, uh, the leather, of, of course, like all leather does, will eventually stretch out over time to the point at which the strap and the slit itself will pull through the staple and become unsecured, thus only being on the saddle through the top iron and the bottom straps holding it to the skirt of the saddle. So even with all that being said, these 59 style saddlebags are actually pretty simple and still an effective design. So combining our previous video of what's supposed to go in the saddlebags with this video of more kind of looking at the dimensions and the style uh, and the, you know the kind of the fit of the saddlebags themselves, uh, let's actually see what can fit inside these saddlebags. Uh, here I have placed some of the original materials specified in Cogden's compendium uh, as far as what's supposed to go in there in addition to additional items that I have personally uh, found, you know, kind of necessary while on campaign. So with those items listed, let's specifically start with what Cogden said should be in the saddlebags, or I guess how they were designed or what was supposed to go in them. He mentions first two horseshoes actually already fit to the horse itself. Uh, actually nails for those shoes. We got some nails right here for those horseshoes. Uh, a curry comb and a brush. Okay, those were the items that he had specified are supposed to go in those saddlebags. And like I previously said, I actually added some other things that personally I found uh, necessary or I guess really helpful while on campaign myself. Uh, sometimes if a hat, you know, I have a sleeping cat that may not fit my bedroll. Uh, got a hoof pick right here, got some gloves, actually a couple pair of gloves. I have uh, either some winter wool knit gloves. I got some gauntlets right here. Uh, again, like I said, a hoof pick, a gun tool, a pocket knife, maybe if I don't want it in my pocket, a housewife if I don't want it in my bedroll, a medicated paper or any paper to wipe my butt with when I go to the bathroom. Uh, and honestly, me personally, I think this is the most important thing in here uh, is actually extra coat straps. Those of you who've been on campaign before, uh, I'm sure you've, you know, it's kind of become a, a common thing that I guarantee you someone will bust a, a coat strap when they're tight, and, you know, securing their, their great coat or their bedroll roll to their saddle because after you know make getting as tight as you can over multiple days multiple campaigns multiple seasons uh you're gonna have guys every event we go to uh one or two guys pops a coat strap and so i have extra coat straps because if you pop one or pop two uh you're kind of uh, out of luck as far as securing your great coat or your bed roll to your saddle so i always carry extra some extra coat straps for my saddle additionally if they can fit i have uh some some matches of 10, uh, some extra things to keep dry. Uh, and lastly, if I can fit it in there, my Bible. Now, again, I don't like, the, even though if you reach or if you re, uh, watch our bedroll episode, they mention having, uh, you know, books or whatever references rolled up in your bedroll. It makes your bedroll gigantic, and so I don't like doing that. And if I can, I like to put uh, at least papers, letters. Uh, in this case, uh, my New Testament uh, period. In fact, this is actually an original um, from '59, I believe, uh, written to a uh, to a uh, from a teacher to a her, one of her students. It's actually pretty neat. But I carry this when I can in my saddlebags. So let's again, let's see what all fits in here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our saddlebags and start with the required items first. Uh, expanding the saddlebags, I'm gonna stick my horseshoes in there. And then with those horseshoes, I'm gonna put my brush. Uh, I like it because that way it keeps them from rattling around. In the other pocket itself, I will put my uh, curry comb. Open up this pocket real quick and actually uh, put that curry comb in. Again, I'm going to actually untie this thong. These are actually brand new saddlebags, so I'm going to stretch them out a little bit here, get that thong out. So put those, put that curry comb in there. Uh, and generally, the handle kind of sticks out until the saddlebag is worn in. After that, uh, you'll notice that I got, I got some room here, okay? So what I'll do is I'm actually going to collect the nails from those horseshoes. I'm actually going to put those in the pocket here of the side that actually had the, the, the horseshoes in there. So I'm gonna slit, uh, kinda 
get, let those uh, fall in there, shake them down. Uh, after that, I have, I have some room here, especially on the side that doesn't have the brush because that brush takes up a lot of room. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe drop a, a hoof pick in the sleeve of the other side. Okay, and then I'm going to drop my uh, maybe a pocket knife and a gun tool. And there we go. And then my coat straps. And again, what I like to do with my coat straps, I like to actually wind them up or actually coil them up relatively tight. Uh, because if you do that and then actually kind of slide them into the pockets of the saddlebags or even in the main compartment itself, they tend to get out of the way pretty easy uh, and not take up so much room. So I'll slide those down in there. I'm going to coil the second one up as well. Okay. Coil that up and stick them down in there. Okay, there we go. I have room for my housewife if I want to. I'm gonna throw in a pair of gauntlets, which I should have enough room there. All right, and I'm getting kind of, uh, kind of stressed on that one. Now, if you notice, I still have my medicated paper, my uh, Bible, and my hat, and my other knitted gloves. I'm not going to worry about my knitted gloves because uh, I already have my gauntlets in there. And either, depending on what campaign I'm on, either I'm going to take the knitted gloves for warmth or my gauntlets, uh, you know, not both, depending on the situation. So I'm going to place those off the side. My hat, honestly, I would probably already have rolled in my uh, bedroll, so I'm not going to worry about my hat. But again, I have my medicated paper, Bible, and matches. Uh, medicated paper, just personally, uh, being on campaign, I like to have my toilet paper uh, uh, relatively easily accessible. Sometimes if I have room, I stick it in my uh, sack coat pocket. Otherwise, I like it in my saddlebags because it's a e nice, easy way of accessing things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick my medicated paper beside my brush. There's a little bit more room available there. Uh, another thing with that medicated paper is, again, if it gets wet, it's just wrapped in, in cardboard. If it gets wet, then uh, it... <laughs> It, uh, it, you know, it gets, gets wet and soggy, and so I like to protect it with the flap of my saddlebags with the, you know, protection of everything else around it. Uh, the saddlebags offer a lot of uh, decent protection. Uh, with my match and, and uh, extra cartridges here, um, I have in my match safe, I have extra pistol cartridges and uh, some matches. I have enough room for some extra cartridges in here, so I'm going to put that in there with my matches, leave the... Ten at home, and it looks like I do not have enough room for my Bible. So after that, I'm going to go ahead, secure my saddlebags by tightening them down. Again, the lazy part of me just finds the first hole that the uh, buckle will go into, and goes through there. Okay, uh, and. And with that, that's definitely a full set of saddlebags. And this set of saddlebags actually weighs six and a half pounds, which definitely doesn't help the maximum weight that a trooper should carry all geared out and tacked out, uh, which we'll actually get to in another video. But anyways, six and a half pounds, including the saddlebags. So one thing that I would like to note is that this video is specifically in reference to the saddlebags that were designed to go to the standard rank and file who were issued the 59 set of tack, including these saddlebags. So it must be noted that farriers assigned to each regiment generally carried modified bags or completely different ones, as you can see in one of my favorite pictures here of a farrier ready for a long ride in the Western theater. You can notice that his bags are definitely not standard issue, uh, and that is, again, due to the fact that he was a regimental farrier or assigned to his company or his regiment as a farrier. So as with anything, especially history and diving into the nuances and the deep part of rich history, there are always exceptions to the rule. However, what we try to focus on is the anonymous trooper and his experiences during the war. 
So I hope you find that interesting. One thing I'm actually curious on for, for you guys is what else do you think troopers would have put in their saddlebags? If you notice, I didn't put a few of my items in there, my Bible or my New Testament, I'd have to put somewhere else. What would you have put in them if you were riding on a long campaign more than 150 years ago? Please comment below on what you think would go in them or your thoughts on whether there was enough room or not for what you would want to put in them. So again, thanks for watching. Hope this episode was worthwhile to you and diving into the nuances of the federal cavalry during the American Civil War. Please like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and again, until we see you in the field, ride hard.